Uh, I'm Spike Bennett from the Bob River Show. And any Jenny True Blood fans? Any of you have uh, Fantasia glasses at home? Uh, we do. Uh, so, our next uh, panel is a real treat for you fans of the uh, HBO series, I as well. Uh, and I want to bring out uh, my co-host at the Bob River Show. We do a morning reader show at 95.7 KGRFM. And uh, the nice thing that's happened to us in the last 20 years is your moderator, uh, and my very good friend and partner on radio. Please welcome Jody Brothers to the stage. I'm so glad I didn't wear that. It would have been really embarrassing if we were going to say Hi, everyone. How are you? <laughs> oh, my parking out there? What a disaster, right? By the way, I'm going to curse. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. Uh, you are my people. Uh, okay, so I want to I, I wanna identify a couple things that we're all on the same page, because that's how we have to start. Number one, I have never moderated one of these panels before, so you have to bear with me, which leads to number two, Thank you, Matt. I assume that was a compliment. It was, right? Did yeah. you say it looked good? Good. Uh, number two, I brought notes with me, which is new for me, because normally I'm just like a cram it in my head kind of person, but I had a fear that this was going to turn into the Chris Farley show. Do you remember that from Saturday Night Live? Or Chris Farley had the talk show, and he had Paul McCartney come out, and he just sat there going, um, remember when you were in the Beatles? That was totally awesome. And that is what this would be. And it would be amazing for me, and it would totally fucking suck for you. <laughs> so, yes, I have everything all written out. I have two stacks. This should be really cool. Because Pam's backstage right now. <laughs> I know, so we'll just get to it. I see that people are filing in, but it's not our fault if you guys were late because you were taking a picture with freaking Darth Vader. <laughs> Here's my written out, handwritten intro. Ready? <clears throat> Kristen Bauer Van Strong is the vampire we all know and love on HBO's True Blood. Never missed an episode. Anybody else never missed an episode? Okay, I'm gonna trump you all out. Anybody else never missed an episode while watching live when it airs? Not taping you right there? I'm quite proud of myself. I don't tape this. I don't get it the season after the season's done. And I say, don't tell me what happened. I watch this shit live. <laughs> so for five seasons with the sixth revving up this summer, she's played the daughter and business partner of Eric Northman. <laughs> she has the best lines of the night. She wears the best costumes of the show. She is the sassiest walking dead swagger we've ever seen. She will personally eat, fuck, and kill all of us. <laughs> So much. You guys, I'm going to you for later questions. Ready? Kristen Bauer von Stratton, please come up here. because now they come in digitally. So with Adobe Reader, there's the little find drop down menu and I can put in Pam and hit enter, enter, enter until I see me, 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 me. And then, right, let's be honest. And then, um, and then I, I now at this point, I didn't in the beginning, but I was go, that's a great line, you know, and how am I gonna do it? And you're finding your way. And now I go, Oh, that's good. That's one of those lines. Well, because at this point, now you 
you know, it's been five seasons since yeah. that coming, and yeah. you've done Comic Cons before, and you've been doing this long enough to have met so many big fans, I'm sure. Yeah. And you must hear that from everybody. A lot of ways to learn it. Are you? Do you, do you have a sailor mouth in your real life, or is this something you had to work on to really give the zing? When I was four, sitting around the dinner table with my family in Wisconsin, on the farm, my mom said, eat your beans, Chris, and I said, I'm not going to eat these fucking beans. <laughs> so, it's, yeah. Well, fuck her for trying to eat. Right? <laughs> The moderator has told you to tell your mom to go find yourself. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> that was not on my list of things to say. We're bonded for life. I would like to apologize. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about season six. Um, what happened? <laughs> Probably everyone. Everyone. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, everyone writing this down, these are spoilers. Little blood. <laughs> blood, just a little bit of blood, okay? Uh huh. Some corsets for Pam. Thank God. Because I'm not going to let them just put a burka on you and change it. <laughs> You've given your character some twists. They rotted your face off. That was very rude. Was that but just... they did not take away your outfit. And um, even when my face was rotting, I had false eyelashes and lipstick on, which I thought was so... Girl, you got to try, girl. Right? Actually, so let's skip ahead. That's on my list of things to ask, but not yet. Let's see how this is going. I'm just going right off script. Um, that was season four where your face rotted off, right? Yeah. Um, how long did you sit in a makeup chair to get that done? Ooh. It, it was intense. You know, the first... It was on average four to five hours, but the first curse in the woods from Marnie, where my face starts rotting and I go, Ooh. that was nine hours in the chair. Nine hours? It was three hours where they put a little bit of rot starting, and then we went out back into the woods and I went, Ooh. and then cut, went back in the chair for three hours. So you really couldn't mess that up. I really didn't want to mess it up, and there was, I don't even know if it would be funny if you tell, but, but then we went to the next stage, and then we got to the stage, I think the second stage was pulling it off, and I just kept practicing over and over because I didn't want to go through the reset, Yeah. and our sweet Masters FX guy, Dan, kept saying, just put your finger in the hole and push, <laughs> and, I, and I write that. Okay. I was so focused, I kept saying to myself, my finger in the hole, push. My finger in the hole, push. It's so surreal in the middle of the night. Well, what ha I mean, you know, not to dwell on this one space, but what happens on a show like that when you've got, you know, hundreds of witches standing around and the whole crew standing around? Let's say, hypothetically, you were to mess that up and you got your, oh, wrong, you said, oh, or whatever it was. Is that... That's hours that everyone's sitting around waiting for you. Yeah, and it was cold. So you don't want to do that to your fellow actors or anybody. And you know, I just I just want to get it right, you know. So you do you do get it right. I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about season five. Because that was the season of pain. I mean, right? Am I right? Like very exciting. We got to know your background finally. It was more than just like every once in a while you pop it and go, fuck that shit, please. <laughs> and I, um, I want to focus on the costuming for when it was like, it was like 1903 or 1905 or whatever it was. The costuming was beautiful. And her name on my handy notes, Audrey Fisher, her costume language. Is she award winning? What, what is her process for, you know, how she designs those costumes? Because that was beautiful. She is so amazing. I love her. I mean, she's it's such a big part of Pam is the writing and the costumes. And Audrey takes so much time with every outfit. And I really, you know, I, I hate that you like it's passed over for the big award. It does. I wasn't going to bring that up because I don't know if you're sensitive about it. I'm a little pissed off because, and not so much for myself, but we all feel that the crew and is doing such an 
unbelievable job, but because we fall into a certain genre, you know, it doesn't get, they don't get the attention they need. Sex and blood and killing and drugs. Right? Like, that's a good job. <laughs> right? I don't, I don't understand why I was. I don't understand either, but, but I was very pleased to find out that you were madam and not a yeah. comic prostitute. Right? Um, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, you were the boss. When yes. you were reading, uh, I don't know if you read the books before yeah. you joined the cast, but when this was unfolding for you as you were reading it on your Adobe, as we know, yes. were you like, fuck yeah, that's what her deal is? Like, yes. do you feel like this is all unfolding perfectly for Pam? I thought it was so perfect and I waited so long. No joke. Right? And at the end of season four, we were at Comic Con and Alan Ball said next year, oh, it was so sweet. We were Paley Fest, actually. And, and they asked different cast members what they wanted to see on the show, and Alex said, I want to see our backstory. And we'd been making up this backstory. I don't know what he had in his head, and I had something in my head. But when I saw it come through on the page, I just thought it was so perfect because it explained everything we know about Pam. For all of the time that you've been on the show, it does seem like you've shared the most screen time with uh, Alex Skarsgård, who this <laughs> audience hates. The women, like, every time I bring his name up, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> Dead silence. Um, yeah. Is he uh, unattractive in real life? And does he smell like caramel? And also, does he talk about me? <laughs> you don't have to yeah. any of those, but I... <laughs> Like, you guys share a lot of screen time together. You've yeah. obviously been friends for years. It seems yeah. like you're very close. Yeah. Um, did he teach you Swedish? I think is the question. He, you know, oh God, that, that is such a nightmare for me. So they, you know, the script will come in and it'll say the line in English, but then it'll be in parentheses, it'll say in Swedish. And I, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so then I start texting and calling and emailing Alex. Did you see this? And, and then, and he, you know, records himself saying it in Swedish. Gross, nobody wants to hear it. <laughs> it's so gross. That's lame, I can't believe he does that, I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god, you know how much money he can sell those for? <laughs> you know how much we're more charging for his autograph? <laughs> I know! I want a personalized message from him in Swedish. Well, when I started auctioning things for charity and my charities from the cast, Alex would, you know, finish his coffee and throw it in the trash, and I think, ah, I could, and I <laughs> half a sandwich, and I'm like, it's like a thousand dollars. Like, you know how many elephants I could save? But like, you know she saves the elephants, right? We're gonna get to that. That's not this stuff, you guys. That's this stuff. I should get to that. We have to talk about that. You are in the right place, lady. We love our animals up here, but I love. Uh, it. Just a couple more True Blood questions, yeah. then you guys will fill in the rest of the True Blood questions when you get the mic time. Um, are you vegan or are you vegetarian? I'm actually vegetarian, and I aspire to be vegan, and am vegan when I'm not traveling. It's completely impractical. We're not going to blame you. <laughs> uh, it is. Are you, if there's any vegans in the audience, you guys are great. It's nothing against you, but it's really impractical. Um, <laughs> For, for you, are you grossed out by the amount of gore, albeit fake gore, on the show? Like, can you even bear looking at all that blood? I can handle human gore. <laughs> People are gross. Yeah. <laughs> um, one last question about True Blood, and then we can go on to the animal stuff, because I don't want to get too far away from it before uh, we potentially run out of time, which should never happen. But can you tell us how you originally auditioned for True Blood? I, uh, it was towards the end of we had like three years of striking. So the writer struck, the director struck, the actor struck. And, and so it was very hard to work for quite a long time. And once auditions started happening, it was really a relief. So I got a call to go in to read for, you know, the manager is very excited because his job is to get you these auditions. So he'll call and go, oh my god, you're going in for Alan Ball. I'm like, stop talking, because I have to go in and get into the room and not be too nervous. And then he goes, it's HBO. I'm like, oh my god, it's vampires. I was like, stop talking. <laughs> so but was, that, was that a positive for you? So positive. Oh. Like, I was in an Alan book, you know? Yeah. And then HBO I've always loved. And I used to watch Deadwood. Yeah. And, uh, that's one of my 
favorite still, and I used to think, wow, to be on a show like that. And Al Ball was six feet under too, right? Yes. Maybe the greatest series before True Blood, and right? potentially the series finale was like one of the best moments on TV, you know. Unbelievable. Yeah. But back to True In American Beauty? Yes. I mean, I was in it. Ah, oh, so, so I, I was just, oh, wow. And then vampires. Like, oh, my God. And they usually, I didn't have a history of getting cast for tough characters. And I, I just thought that it was this one thing. And, you know, they would never. You don't look like you could pull a knife and stab me right now. Right? <laughs> I believe you can now that we've spent some time together. <laughs> we talked a little before we. She'll stab me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So then I, it was really sort of, not really even a scene, it was sort of snarky Pam quotes kind of cut together. So I just went in and did them, and then they called three weeks later and said, would you come in and do them again? Well, they had put me on tape, they had recorded the audition. And so you know when you have to come back, when they can just rewind the tape, is because you did some things right, but they're on the fence. So it always makes me nervous because I don't know which of the things were right and which of the things put them on the fence. So it's like price, the price is right, where totally. they guessed all the numbers, but then they know that one is wrong, so they start rearranging numbers and they don't know which one. Yes. Is this the common metaphor that you get? You know? yeah. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Where they're like, you know, $23,294. And they're like, one is wrong. Right. It's like, shit, I really want that geometric. Right. And then, <laughs> Or 800 cans of tuna or something. <laughs> Whatever it is. Whatever it is, and I wanted this. So I go, why? Why are they having me in again? And sometimes it's because they add more people in the room that will decide. And they want to see you in person. No, nope. same people. Fuck. Um, well, let's look at the tape, you know? Why do I? No, nope, they want you to come in. Okay, so I went in. I did my thing. And I thought, oh, that's pretty much what I did the first time. So... And then I went to the Philippines for a month to do a movie and forgot about life. I mean, it's so different to go to the third world, as you know. I do. Yeah. $3 massages. <laughs> like, for $6, you get two people. Two people massage. You. you get four hand massage. Four hands on you for $6. Yes. And I hadn't... Uh, I, this is really, we really should be alone and not with microphones. Like they're not here. Okay. Tell me what I've been single for way too long. Go on. I want to be quiet. It's a totally private story. I was sure I was gay. Yeah. And then someone said, were your eyes open? I go, no. <laughs> Maybe I am still straight. I don't really care. In the Philippines, I'm here for love. What happened in the Philippines? What happened? <laughs> But four hands. Seriously. <laughs> right? Well, An enormous debt, $15. What's happening now? This is not on my nose. <laughs> it was awesome. That was awesome. So then I get this text, you got true blood, and I'm like, what's that? I better put my clothes on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in love with two Filipino women, I'm pretty sure. So. But screw you guys, I have to back <laughs> Good luck with everything. <laughs> and then my manager was like, is the HBO vampire Ellen Ball? I was like, oh my god! So I flew back in, and you know, I finally had adjusted to the Philippines time zone, which is opposite ours, and then, you know, a 94 hour flight, and I get off the plane, and they send me over to get my fangs made. So it was like, you know, the whole dental. Yeah, because those are, those are the real deal things. You're They're not the used real to deal. having those in. No. They look very painful. I bet it's hard to actually talk without stabbing yourself. It is. The first day when I was going to wear them was also Alex's first day. Gross. Stuff Gross. in his mouth. Ew. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Did he need your help? Wait, I know what you're going to say. He needed your help putting the fangs into his mouth, and so you did that thing where you just stick your finger in his push. <laughs> Which he doesn't find strange at all. Yeah, he's totally used to me doing that by now. So gross. It's gross that you're friends with him. Go on. <laughs> it's like, go about your fangs. 
So I saw as he was finishing, I was showing up, and I said, did you, did you talk with your pains in? He goes, yeah. And I said, is it easy? He said, no. <laughs> and I go, really, seriously? He goes, I'd practice. And I did not get to practice, and it didn't go so well. There. Ouchie. Yeah, because was, I was supposed to be being tough and cool. And I kept saying, can I practice? Are my fangs here? Does anyone have my fangs? And they brought him in, put him in my mouth. I was like, hello, sit there, I'm enormous. <laughs> And they would smile, and they did, and they took them back to match the color, and, and I said, can I have those back? And he was gone. And then I got in the scene with Jason Stackhouse, where he comes to Fantasia, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I'm being all cool, and they said, okay, so we're, we just got to roll. So say your lines, then we're gonna hand you the fangs, you put them in, and you say your lines again, and then with CGI, they make them click in and out. So I said, um, you're nothing like your sister. And then they handed me the fangs. And I went, yeah, nothing like your fifth <laughs> And then that's what happened with the whole crew. I just heard the silence, and then even, <laughs> Okay, I can't continue. <laughs> Stephen Moyer seems to wear the fangs the most. He, he wears them the most and he's the best. He's the best at wearing the fangs, right? And, and I went to interview him about this when I was having trouble and I said, how do you do it? Because he is great in them. And he said, you just have to take the pain. And really it is. They just poke down in your bottom lip. The things we do for love. Um, he directed a couple episodes this season. He now. did. How is he behind the camera? Amazing. Amazing. That's wonderful. Did he direct the premiere? Yes, he did. Which and is what, really big. What, what happens in the premiere? <laughs> <laughs> are you still are you still with Tara? Oh my god, are you guys? <laughs> We're supposed to be talking about animals and stuff, but let me just say that. When you guys start making it, I was like, oh my god! Right? Yeah. That was exciting. When you guys read the script, we were like, oh my god! Did you guys like text each other? And, oh my, was there a lot of what I just said? Going yeah, on? Uh, yeah, we, we did do a bit of that. And then, um, you know, on the day, we, I mean, we both got stomach aches from all the mints because we didn't know exactly when the kiss would happen. <laughs> So we'd go back and, and we'd be popping mints and then they go, no, no, we're going to cut before the cast. Okay. You know. we, were, we knew that Pam liked gals because yeah. it's been going on every once in a while during a season you'll be like sucking some poor girl's thigh up. We're like, right. oh, Pam, so oh Pam, you went to the Philippines, didn't you? <laughs> In doing my research for this, this panel, I discovered so much about you that I was not aware of. I mean, you are a jewelry designer, you're a painter, you're a writer, um, you are a huge animal activist, and for me, there's so much I want to talk about. So, I guess before I start peppering you with my thick stack of questions, mm -hmm. maybe I should just ask you if there's anything specific that you want to make sure you mention as far as your foundations, what right. you raise money for. Um, is there anything specific that you want to make sure you mention before I ask you leading questions about wrong things? <laughs> oh, well, the main thing I'm working on right now, which has been all-consuming, started in hiatus last year, is I went to Africa for a month. Just so great. She says she cries a lot in her real life, so just let her go with it. Yeah, I do. I do. It's terrible. I cry like 50 times a day. And uh, you do? <laughs> I <laughs> They, it was, they had this dinner in Hollywood for just like 10 Hollywood people. And Did they serve tigers and elephants? <laughs> they, served, a joke, you guys. they served endangered species. And it was awesome. <laughs> it's a joke because right. it's obviously not true. And it all tastes like She's an animal activist. They don't do that. Like, 
And so this really amazing sweet dude from Kenya, when the middle of dinner, the end of dinner, and he says, you know, I came all this way because my elephants are dying and I need your help. And I'm like, who, who, me? No, he can't be me. Like, I pray to God he means someone else because I'm really fucking busy and, <laughs> and I live here in the United States. So the fuck am I supposed to do about it? elephants in Africa. And for the next few months, I started looking online about what was happening to the rhinos, and I watched rhinos go extinct in Africa and for their horn. And I thought, oh my God. And I just kept looking and looking, and then I thought, well, what the hell can I do about it? So we ended up going to Kenya and shooting and I took a camera crew and my husband, and we just went and talked to people and asked Africans, so what's happening and what can we do to help you? And it was really great. So now I'm editing, which is a really, you know, I've never done any of this and I don't know what I'm doing, so it's all exciting and frightening and tiring and wonderful. And so it's just out of love. This is a love project. It is. Uh, it's about poachers. Yeah. Um, which people are, the, the news trickles here. Yeah. It trickles here. Most recently, it was like a, a herd of 22. Just, yeah. And it's not it's not the people there. The people there love the animals too, but yeah. it's the poachers. So it is. What what can some money do? What the what is amazing is the places that we went to. There's four or five documentaries being done on this same topic in the same place right now because it's so bad, and we did less than 10 years to try to keep elephants in the wild. And it's all for their ivory and for their tusks, and it's for chopsticks, for a vase. For chopsticks. For chopsticks. And um, so we decided to go to, because there's a lot of, you know, documentaries take a very hard look at things. And so I kind of took a little different tack only because the other way is being covered. And also, I spend my life looking at animal rights issues, and it's very hard and very depressing. So what I'm going to do with my documentary is show the great work that people are doing. I mean, it's like, we went to places where they're actually winning, and they're actually, like, Kenyans in their own country are, they can win. They just need 50 bucks for shoes, you know? They don't need much, and they don't want anything. They don't live the way we live. They don't care about things. Their idea of success and happiness is not our idea of success and happiness. I realized as a Westerner, when I think and I dream, I think of success and I think of my mortgage paid off or whatever. They, they don't, they just sort of live with their wildlife and with each other in a completely different magical way. And they're happier than we are. I couldn't believe it. It obviously had a very profound It was on wild. Him. Did this surprise your husband at all? You said he's from there. Yeah, and he is different than I am. He's not Western. And, um, but he's from South Africa, which is, you know, it feels pretty first world. So, but he is, he's still different than I am. He's very handsome. He's very handsome. His name is Aubrey, yes, is that yeah. how you pronounce it? Yeah. And um, I was wondering if you could maybe uh, tell us a little bit about the story about how you guys met, because that <laughs> is some crazy shit. <laughs> it all comes back to that massage again, because I was like, you I gotta do something. You have got that man. I did. <laughs> so, I, um, you know, went like another year after the massage single and came back to LA and, and I had this really awful week you know, just one of those Hallmark bad weeks. And I thought, I'm going to get a tattoo, and I'm going to get laid. <laughs> I'm good on right? And then you're sitting there like, well, how do I do either? Honestly, I don't, I don't know what I want, I don't know who I want. If only we met before now. <laughs> I could have helped you, but go on. My husband would be so horrified that I'm telling this story. Yeah, nobody's going to tell him anything. Okay, good. <laughs> if anyone's filming this, I will kill you. Nobody's filming it. 
So, the, <laughs> so I um, started designing my tattoo, and then I went to the nutritionist's office, and, and there was one chair open with a CD on it, and um, the lady sitting next to that chair, I said, is this your CD? Can I sit here? And she was like, yeah, that's my CD. Oh my God, this is the most awesome man. And she went on and on and on. And I just wasn't in the mood. Typical person in a nutritionist office. Right. That's what you get. That's what you things. get. <laughs> All popped up on lavender. <laughs> Go. Vitamin C. Seriously. So I finally realized I wasn't going to get out of this conversation. So I, you know, said, oh, okay, tell me about this fucking CD. <laughs> Right, it was a nice tweet. Tell me your fucking dumb story. <laughs> Go on. You were in that bar. And uh, she went on about it so long that I actually got curious. And I went and got it on iTunes. And then I got a little more curious, because his voice is like heaven. And I then did a little internet research and found a video. And the name of the band is, it's all right, give him a plug. That, he was with this band called The Lemmings in South Africa. And, um, and the video I watched way too many times, to the, and I started thinking, well, why can't I ask him out? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my friends were like, oh. I'm just going to get a tattoo and start emailing this rock star. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good, it's man. Good. All hopped up on lavender <laughs> myself. Right? <laughs> Cranked up on B12. <laughs> Shit. Let's do it. I love it. So you email, would you email like through the website? Like in my space. My space. <laughs> and how many years ago was this? Four. And you've been married for how long? Four. <laughs> Now, does that mean that people can email you through your website and you will read it? <laughs> She's like, what? Well, I'm not sure you know. I'm just kidding. Your website's awesome, though, Thank by the way. Has everyone been to her website? There's a lot of great information. Picture beautiful paintings for sale. Oh, thank you. Really lovely stuff. You're like a Renaissance woman. And one thing that I found on your website was this quote by Edmund Burke. You know the one I'm about to say? Yeah. This really seems like you. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. That's above my, that's what got me into this documentary mess. You live by this. Yeah, I do. How many um, animals do you have living in your house right now? Are you dogs and cats too, or just bigger picture? Um, two dogs, two cats, and a husband. And a husband. <laughs> I know. Uh, you are also a jewelry designer. Yeah. Tell us about this line uh, and the purpose of the line. So I've got two necklaces that I did. One is called Care a Little More, and that goes to benefit endangered species. And then I have this elephant necklace that is benefiting the, the African elephant. How do all these fine people get the elephant necklace? Or do you just have the one? And you have to <laughs> yeah, push you it's over not the best it. business model. Yeah. I have the one necklace. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to say Africa with it. Does anyone have a million dollars? It's one. really expensive, this one necklace. <laughs> On my website, you can find links to the places to get these things. Where do you find the time to do all this stuff? Oh, I'm so friggin' tired. <laughs> it's so exhausting. What's your, uh, I mean, your average day, shoot inclusive, if you want to tell us weekend, whatever you want to tell us, what is your average day? Because I know, you know, I wake up at 4.30, to, or I'm at work at 4.30, and then I play with my kid for the rest of the day, and I walk my dogs, and then by 7 o'clock, if I don't have a cocktail and a pillow, you don't want to be around me. I know. So, I need to start drinking. Yeah, you have to start drinking. You I do. Drink. I don't drink. Oh, you have to try it. It's not for any reason. Like, oh my I just, God. I just have to don't try. drink because of the schedule. I don't get the time. And also, now, you can't like, be that thin if you want to drink. Right. Because I am actually an extremely thin person under all this. <laughs> I'm in amazing shape of experience. You just don't know. You don't know. <laughs> But, uh, no, don't start drinking. I have a very skinny friend who drinks a lot, but she does not eat them. So of course she doesn't eat. You live in LA. Right. Right. Um, tell, us, tell us what your average day is like with all this work. I just get up at 9 and go to bed at 1 and 7 days a week and I just do stuff. 
That is a terrible answer to my question. <laughs> Which was, no, not on my sheet, but a valid question. Of it. <laughs> it just goes and goes. Like, it, if I'm not, the set days are like a vacation to me. Because I go to the set and hang out with my buddies and I do one thing for 14 hours and it is heaven. One amazing thing. Although, how can it be heaven with those shoes? I know. Those are, I mean, will they ever let you just maybe have some moccasins, some flip-flops? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, we like, five we, years ago, it cargo pants and flip-flops. Yes, we did have one where Alex and I were both in matching black sweatsuits, and we both had flip-flops, but Pam's were bejeweled, of yeah. course. Yeah. It was so cute. And here and there, I get a juicy sweat outfit. You got that nasty-looking sweat outfit last season. Was the Walmart sweatsuit. <laughs> when you were very alive. I love that freaking thing, because we were shooting outside. I could put long underwear under it. It was awesome. <laughs> just, I, I know you can't tell us everything about season six, but just promise that we're going to see as much Pam as we got in season five. Will you, can you promise that without being a liar? I can't, but so far, so good. So far, how far along are you in shooting? Uh, episode three. Episode three, so it just started. So what happens in the first two episodes? <laughs> If they have questions. 
If, is this how it works? Where are the people that are... That know? That know, because I feel like... we clearly that, know. Well, someone is like, oh, we're going to give you a signal, and then you will transition people to the microphones. But I never saw a signal because I was so intrigued with you. And so now I'm thinking, we've gone on for quite a while, and I have not said, if you have a question for Kristen, please head to one of the microphones. And I apologize in advance if I heckle you, but it's definitely going to happen. Okay. Sure. All right, so now you people already knew. I was the only one who didn't know. Uh, let's, I'm sorry, madam, we're going to go with the pregnant woman first. Is that, oh, you got the little ass kicker in there. I see he's walking dead. That's not a real baby. <laughs> You're not pregnant, you liar. <laughs> okay, bye. My baby looks lumpy. I love my Pam, but I also love Eric. So for all the ladies, I'm really curious. Does he wear a modesty sock on set? Because I heard that he does.
particular moment in your life that you could recall that was a catalyst towards becoming a vegetarian or getting interested in animal rights? I was just trying to put this together because I'm doing the speaking thing on it, but and I thought, what what is that moment? You know, it, there's these things like that quote: "All evil needs is for good men to do nothing," and I see that everywhere. And then at a certain point, I thought, I just sort of realized that I don't like suffering others as well. It, it, and I don't want to contribute to it, to others suffering. And, and I'm doing it everywhere, probably, and I don't even know. Like, I don't want to make jeans soft. They, China, they, these chemicals run out the back door into strains. And, I don't even know where these things are happening. And, and so I went, well, okay, I'm gonna look at it and then decide. So I, I got this concept of the first thing you have to do is look and make a conscious decision of which team you're playing for. You're playing for the good guys or you're playing for the bad guys. Whether we know it or not, it's still happening. So I went and looked at me, how it lives, and how my food, before I started studying genetically modified organisms, how we eat all day, every day, but we don't really think about it. If we're sort of still like eight years old, we're like, that tastes good. You know? You sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to look. So I looked and went, all right, there's two things. One, how the animal lived, and one, how the animal died. And that's a very specific whether you think things should die for your food. But I made a very, I really was like, I'm not okay with something living badly every second of its life until it's killed. Those are two totally separate issues. So I was like, I can eat other shit. <laughs> See, it was the I can eat other shit then. <laughs> yeah, it was like, I can eat a carrot or whatever. Like, I don't really care. You know, I can eat a peanut. So that's how it happened. And that's her diet. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of is. Good. And hummus. <laughs> Make your own? No. What's your brand? It's, I've got this little, like, funny grocery store near me. It's this awesome little organic, post-apocalyptic looking sort of place. <laughs> and they carry your secret And they're sandwich. like, have some, I don't know who, in the back making this stuff. Don't worry about it. Yeah, right? <laughs> you don't want to know how the sausage is made. <laughs> Did you have something else? No. I like you though, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want I don't want uh, I don't want to cut people off like that, but we want to make sure that we get to everyone and I took up so much time and did such a bad job. Because <laughs> I was so busy with all my questions. And then she said I look old. No. <laughs> I got off track. Remember when you said that? Remember when you just yelled at us? <laughs> it doesn't it's, it's hard to be up for us, I know. <laughs> She's like, okay. Go ahead. I wanted to say thank you. About a year ago, you did a PSA for It Gets Better. And you delivered it with such beauty and such bravery. And I really wanted to thank you. I work with teenagers, and the message is so critical. And so from my heart, now I'm going to go cry. So thank you so much. to cry. Very honest story too. You guys should all go and click on it. I'm not going to tell you what happens. Matt. Yeah, uh, I have kind of a two-part question. Uh, the first is whether or not you're expecting to be back on Once Upon a Time. And then, <laughs> and then the second is uh, you have such little time to prepare between episodes for just one series. How do you juggle three in one year? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> B12. That's why I put that nutritionist out. Work. You have to work hard. Work hard. That's right. Um, I uh, yeah. It, as far as once upon a time, when the dragon got killed, I was actually flying up there to shoot the scene, and I did because I didn't have lines once I was a dragon, so I actually didn't read that far in Adobe Reader when I searched Maleficent. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Other people, other people, whatever. Oh, well, me, 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 me. 
and then fucking some dragon. <laughs> so then I'm, you know, in the makeup chair, and I'm like, do I die? <laughs> well, the dragon dies, but I'm the dragon. So I asked them, and they were like, mm, you know, this is, no, like, no one really dies. So I was like, okay. So that's all I know. And I don't know if they were just saying that to me because I'm standing in front of them going, are you killing me? You explode, but you're not dead. <laughs> I mean, it's true. A lot of people do cut back on that shit. I don't know, and then that mist came in. It's a good series. Lots of Once Upon a Time fans here. <laughs> Seems like a lot of people like the supernatural. Yes, do and I do too. I'm trying to now, yeah. I do, and I always did love it. I really, I mean, I, the, I love a lot of things, but I love, um, I mean, those are the books that I read. I like science fiction, and, and so it's really fun to be on these shows that do this. I mean, Once Upon a Time is a green room and two chairs. It's really bizarre. And then as far as preparing, you do get better at, for one, with Pam, I've been playing her for a while, so it helps. But still, they write new situations where you don't really know. And luckily, on the set, we work it out together. And it must take you some time to get into those outfits. Well, I think I'm being serious. I mean, that's a lot. Like, I have incredible. a dresser. You do? Yeah. It, is it a gay man? <laughs> it has to be. Right? Yeah. The way, really? It's a girl. Woman. It's a woman. Yeah. Your dresser is amazing. Yeah, I, I know, right? I mean, it does help that, you know, it's down south and, yeah. you know, you're really the only one who's got kind of a flash here. Uh -huh. You ever look at yourself and think, I'm going to bring this home because my husband has to see this one in person. I feel oh. so bad for him. Like, he watches the show and he's like sitting there and I sweat. Jim. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> right? So I take pictures of myself at work and message them to him and they come home with my sweat. <laughs> your sweats and your Uggs and your hair up and you're like, no, I can't yet. Another step to do. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Please <laughs> ask me. It's really, I mean, the poor guy. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I have another once upon a time question. Um, my roommate and I have really fallen in love with your interpretation of Maleficent, this classic villain. And i um, just wondering if you have any insight in the character, you know, like your personal insight into Maleficent. You know, when I, um, that, that was like, they called me and said, do you want to do it? And I was with my mom and she broke broken her leg and I was trying to get her to the hairdresser. And I was like, what is it? What is it? Oh, that's the green lady with the horns in Sleepy Beauty. And they see her, and I was like, yeah! And then, as I was getting closer to doing it, I thought, I just want her to be different from Pam. Because they're both that similar type of character. And, and I really like when evil characters, when I can find a way where, I don't think they're evil, actually. I just think Pam's honest. So, she's really loyal. She's got huge integrity, and she's just truthful. And so with Maleficent, I tried to find that thing and um, play her not evil. You know, and, and, and uh, apparently it worked, but you never really know when you're doing it. You know, and, and also Lana, who plays the evil queen, was really great to work with. So we just played around with the scene and had so much fun. And we had a whole day to do that first scene. It was really great. Isn't that interesting how so many of the most popular characters on TV, like Pam, like have all of the true love cast besides Sookie, who's of course all good all the time. Um, but you know, other characters like Dexter or you know, Terrace on Homeland, yeah. you're supposed to dislike them and yet they're somehow sympathetic. And that's why Pam rules also, because you're right, she's a hard ass, and right. yeah, she'll kill you. Right. But only because you deserve it, because right. you do. She only kills bad people. That's right. Yeah, and her relationship with Eric is so revealing, you know, that she's so... Tender. Tender, yeah. I love that when that happened in season three. We were all surprised she had a sensitive side. She has, you know, one Achilles heel. Just the one. Just the one. It's because he's... So attractive. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a second question? No, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you for all your questions. Thank you, everybody. And I have to say, uh, this has been a really positive experience for me. For me, too. And I want to thank you for your honesty and for coming out and telling us all your business <laughs> and your sexy talk.
business and also your important work that you're doing. And I hope that everyone will take some time to check out uh, Kristen's website and support some of the efforts because we've got our own dialogues going on here with our you know, elephants in our zoo and GMOs. And this, these are current important Seattle topics. Yes. So you can totally move here if you want.